students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a healthy and productive week so far. Welcome, Bakrat. Welcome to our new member, Rajdeep. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. There is lots of learning to be had in this class. We are looking at the IELTS reading section and we're going to do some practice to get some more band scores and learn some more English. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at G ieltshelp.com that's general ieltshelp.com on both of those websites we have original practice exams hd videos and a fully interactive course for your phone tablet pc uh, this is what our websites look like this is the academic one here with the blue background you can click that big red button to join our premium package we are an official uh, IELTS Registration Center with the British Council and Certified Agents, so you're in good hands with us. Uh, General IELTS, green background, you can click that big red button to join us there. And it is a one-time payment for lifetime access, so definitely well worth it. All right. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can reach me at adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, dot com. You can also check out our Instagram, IELTS underscore A help or G IELTS help. Now we will have an all chat class coming up after this class in about 90 minutes uh, and that will be listening part one and part two and everybody will be able to join in on the chat there. Hi Rashika, hi Bishak, good to see more members in the class. All right. So, uh, we have live classes, of course, all the way until Saturday, as usual. And uh, let's get into today's reading. So, today's reading, we are looking at, this is from our first exam book. Uh, this is uh, our third test. So, exam book one, exam number three. And... Uh, Let's get right into this reading. So uh, step number one in the reading, uh, everyone, is to read the title of the passage. Don't skip over the title. The title is really, really important because it gives you a snapshot of what you will be reading about. And you need to use that title to kind of predict um, what the passage might contain what kind of information it might have as much as possible. This is happening very quickly. You're practicing this at home before your exam. So here we go. Let's take a look at this. Let's read the title. Uh, Tristan da Cunha, an island of remote curiosity. Now, when you see something like this, Tristan da Cunha, don't freak out and be like, hey, that's, is that even English? That doesn't even look like English. Uh, it's a name. Okay. Uh, don't, don't, Panic, that's the worst that you can do during your IELTS exam is panic. Never panic, no matter the situation. Panic is the enemy. Okay, so just stay calm and focus on what you know and focus on strategy. So, an island of remote curiosity. Well, that's definitely English. Uh, let's focus on that. Um, so, it's an island. Okay, that's clear. So, it's a piece of land surrounded by water. Um, of remote curiosity. Uh, what does the word remote mean? Bahrat, Rashika, Abhishek. Uh, what does the word remote, word remote mean? So um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, logical and critical thinking here. Okay, so we read the title. and think critically about the information in the passage. So here we're thinking of the word uh, remote. Okay. And the word remote uh, means what? Okay, Gus says 
The word remote means far. Um, Abhishek means it's isolated. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, so those are some synonyms. So far from others. Uh, isolated, that's a good synonym. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Rashika says alone. All right. So now we put these words together with the concept of an island. So an island that's far from others or an island that's isolated and alone. Okay, and then of course we see here that um, the last word is curiosity. Okay, so um, what does the word curious mean? What does the word curiosity mean? Okay. Curious or curiosity. What does that mean? So, of course, this is happening quickly and then we're putting it all together, right? I'm just really going through this step by step to establish the logic and to build your critical thinking. Uh, welcome to our group of members, uh, Maverick. Um, send me an email so I can hook you up with those exclusive videos. Okay, Abhishek says that... Uh, uh, curious means to want to know something, um, to want to know some new information. Eagerness to learn something, says Devonch. Yeah, so curious means uh, interested to find out more. Want to learn information about a uh, situation or object, let's say. Okay, um, sure. All right. So then if we jump back here, and again, we read this, an island of remote curiosity. So now we can come up with a question. Um, we can come up with this question of uh, why would a person want to know more about an island that is isolated and far away from other places. Okay, so this is the question that you should arrive at and quite quickly within seconds of reading the title, um, thinking logically. Okay, so why would a person want to know more about an island that is isolated and far away from other places? And members, viewers, uh, when I'm saying these sentences and uh, these expressions and terms, make sure to repeat me. So follow with me, copy what I'm saying. Okay, so Abhishek says maybe because of its beauty. Well, why would it be beautiful? It's possible, okay. Uh, what could be some other reasons? So what are some reasons that, uh, that we might be curious about an island that's far away from other pieces of land or other civilizations or cultures? Uh, why would we want to know about it? Um, Gus says, well, maybe the island is mysterious. Okay that's possible as well. It's mysterious, so we want to know about it, but what's mysterious about it? So um, what kind of discovery might we have there? Okay, uh, Devon says it's an island with no human footprint. So yeah, it could be an island with little or no human impact. Um, so to keep this simple, uh, and this is what I always encourage you uh, to do, members and viewers, is keep your thoughts simple, okay? Simple is beautiful. So Maverick says it's unique, Abhishek says people and culture. Yeah, so that's what I would say as well. So um, to discover the unique uh, culture, uh, flora, fauna of the island, right? So this would be my simplest thought here that when we have an island, let's say maybe it has some people on it, 
Um, it would have a very unique culture, some very unique people. Uh, it would have a unique flora, so plant life, uh, quite possibly a unique fauna, so animal life on the island. And that's really interesting for people, right? So that's the idea that you should arrive at reading this title, okay? It's a thought process. It's a step-by-step. -step. It's happening quickly. The more accurate your thought process, the more logical, the more you can infer, the better chances that you're going to get answers correct and you're going to get a high mark, okay? So that's what you're going for. Okay, um, so again, Tristan da Cunha, it's an island of remote curiosity. Why? Uh, because of its unique culture, flora, fauna, history. Okay, uh, all right, so let's take a look at the questions because the questions will give us a little bit more insight. All right, um, now here we go. Uh, read passage one, it has seven paragraph, okay, um, A to G. Which paragraph contains the following information? Write the correct letter in boxes one to five on your answer sheet. So here we have some statements. Each of these statements are found somewhere in this passage. Our um, task is to identify which paragraph contains a specific piece of information. So all of this information is somewhere in the passage and uh, it's valuable for us to review this because it gives us more ideas about what will be in the passage. So uh, let's read this together. And of course, everybody, this is a reading class, so make sure to uh, read with me, okay? So the different types of money used on the island, okay? So here, um, if I'm practicing this at home, or I should say when I'm practicing this at home, um, I shouldn't only just read these, but I should also paraphrase these. Uh, paraphrase these means to uh, state this in a different way because we will not see the exact same words in the passage. So you're not going to see this sentence, different types of money used on the island. So you want to uh, paraphrase this. Okay. Uh, what's another way to say this, members? The different types of money used on the island. Okay. There's definitely some synonyms for different or for money that you can use. Okay, Bakrat says several kinds of currency accepted on the island. So yeah, so that's very good, Bakrat. So several kinds of currency. So currency instead of money uh, accepted. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Abhishek says the various kinds of money, instead of money, I would use currency, Abhishek, used on the island, definitely, okay? So those, that's another way to express the same idea. And you want to train yourself to think about different ways to express these because you're, you'll catch the answer. Not only will you catch the answer faster, but you will also learn new vocabulary and new words, okay? Devanch says multiple ways to make payment on the island. Very good. Yeah, that's another um, way to say it as well. So uh, exam results of Tristan students. Okay, so um, test feedback of the Tristan students or um, test results. Discussion of the original inhabitants of the island. So an explanation of the first people on the island, the island as an armed forces outpost, the island as a, what's another way to say armed forces outpost? Can anybody tell me that, members? So there's kind of a, I would say a more common way to say armed fo uh, forces outpost, armed forces outpost. Anybody know what that is? Armed forces outpost. There's a one word to say armed forces. How would you say that? So let's see who's quick on their toes today. 
Yeah, very good, Devonge. Nicely done, Devonge. Big thumbs up for you right there. Military base, yeah. So uh, the island has a military base, okay? Very good, Jainil. Yeah, military base. I'm sure there's lots of people playing the, those uh, first-person shooter games or interactive <laughs> games in the military base, I think, is a very common word used in online gaming. So, yeah, the island as a military base. Okay, and then geography of the island. So, um, the uh, map of the island, basically. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so this gives us further ideas of what will be uh, in this passage. So, I'm sure there will be some information about the history of the island and about the uses of the island and the culture of the island. Okay, um, here we have another question. It's match the following places with facts about them from the passage. So here you have to match. This is a very popular question on the Isles, by the way. Uh, so here you have some names, St. Helena, Tristan de Cunha, United Kingdom, Portugal. So we know, especially from United Kingdom and Portugal, that these are places or names of places or countries. And uh, we have to match these with these statements. Now, again, when we look at this kind of question, we realize that all of this information is somewhere in the passage. So uh, we can read this and think about it. Took political control of the island in the 19th century. Uses its own currency. Home to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. Origin of the name Tristan de Cunha, Islanders had to be evacuated here after a natural disaster and discovered the island. Okay, so clearly lots more about the history. Okay, and we have some more questions, 12 and 13. Complete each sentence with the correct ending. We have two uh, phrases, and then we have... Five choices. So, um, based on this question, three of our choices are wrong. We don't know what those are. So, in this case, we only look at the actual question because this is in the passage. These might not be. Okay. So, because the number of people that move permanently to the island is so small, something due to its remoteness, the dialect of Tristinians is. All right, so something about the language, the dialect of Tristinians, okay, and something about moving to the island. So some more information there. All right, uh, good. So again, this is happening quickly, and when you're in the IELTS exam and you're looking at this passage from reading the title, inferring the information, to reading the questions, you should have only spent about two minutes on this. Okay, from your 20 minutes. So you should still have about 18 minutes um, for reading and answering questions. Okay, all right. And Jainil says, do not read the options in this question. Yeah, that's right. Because you could be reading useless information, which is a waste of time, energy, and attention. Okay. Now what do I do? So what's my next step? What do I keep in mind? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the passage. As I'm about to read this passage, it's very important that I remember a couple of key strategies. So Important strategy, especially for passages that contain real um, physical concrete information, such as this one. What is that? So what's the strategy? Jainil says visualization. Absolutely. So 
before you start reading a passage like this, you have to remember to see the information in this passage. Okay? And very importantly, be an active participant in the imagery. Okay? In this case, I am a scientist exploring this island. Okay? So what I would do here um, when reading this passage is I would visualize, I would imagine that I am um, an explorer, a scientist. I'm arriving on a ship to this island from far away, and there I am, okay? So in each of these paragraphs, as I read this information, I'm this explorer, and I'm excited to discover the people of this island, the history of this island, okay? So... Um, Devanch says, use the human senses to access this information. And absolutely, Devanch, most importantly, see the information. Humans are visual uh, learners. Janiel says, I'm a member of the island. I'm a, <laughs> okay, good. You're indigenous to the island, Janiel. That's another uh, way to do it. Buffrat says, put yourself in the story. Absolutely. That's what we want to do. So let's do this, okay? So now we're going to read. Again, make sure to read with me. And whenever you can, members, viewers, practice your reading aloud, okay? So uh, practice so that you can hear uh, yourself reading, okay? All right, um, here we go. An Island of Remote Curiosity. Tristan da Cunha is an island in the South Atlantic Ocean uh, formed by volcanic activity and part of the British Overseas Territory called St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan da Cunha. Tristan da Cunha is generally considered to be the most remote inhabited place on Earth because of its extreme isolation and its small population. Tristan da Cunha is a fascinating experiment in sociology and genetics. All right, so I am a scientist. I'm traveling to the most remote inhabited island in the world. It is in the Atlantic Ocean. That's a mistake in the text we discovered later. Um, and um, it's an experiment in sociology. So sociology is the study of society and genetics of course, is the study of um, heredity and genes. Uh, so I'm a scientist. I'm going to this very remote place to study the society um, and the people there because they're going to be very unique. All right. Let's keep reading. So, the island was first discovered in 1506 by a Portuguese explorer named Tristão da Cunha, who named the island after himself. The name of the island was later anglicized by the inhabitants in, into Tristan da Cunha. In 1816, the United Kingdom annexed the island, taking control of it. They used it as a marine military base for a number of decades in the 19th century before it fell into disuse after the construction of the Suez Canal. The Second World War, however, brought renewed purpose to the island. It was used as a top-secret British naval station, codenamed HMS Atlantic Isle. The purpose of the station was to monitor the waters for German U-boats. Okay, so um, military base, there it is, right? That's a perfect example of paraphrasing the questions leading to correct answers. Everybody catch that? So here I'm this scientist and I... Uh, go to the island. I'm a kind of a time traveler, perhaps. Um, so in 1506, I meet with the Portuguese explorer, Tristo da Cunha. Uh, and I'm like, hey, you discovered the island. You were here first. That's fantastic. 
And then, of course, I see that it's being used for military and warfare because it's very isolated. It's got a strategic position and um, it's used uh, in 1816 and then later in the Second World War as well. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Let's keep going. So read with me. Don't just listen, but read with me. Okay. Um, here we go. According to a recent consensus, the island has a population of just 263 people who mainly reside in the settlement known as Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. It is thought that the residents of the island descend from just 15 ancestors, of which eight were male and seven were female. Because the reproduction pool is so small, the residents of the island suffer from a number of medical disorders. There is rampant asthma on the island, which is thought to be a result of the known fact that three of the original founders of the island suffered from asthma. Based on the endemic asthma afflicting inhabitants of the island today, it is thought that there is a genetic underpinning for the condition. Further evidence comes from islanders commonly suffering from glycoma, a degenerative eye condition which left untreated can result in blindness. Okay, so here I'm kind of a medical researcher and I'm looking at the genetics uh, on the island and uh, studying the inhabitants, the people of the island from a genetics perspective, right? So before it was the discovery and the military use now i am studying the genetics so military and history and now the genetic and inheritance in paragraph c all right so i'm keeping a log and i'm visualizing i'm seeing this the speed of my reading uh, is perfectly fine for the ielts exam you do not need to read faster you just need to make sure that you understand what you read and you will be okay all right, um, let's go on with paragraph D. There are just eight surnames among the 263 residents of Tristan de Cunha, corresponding roughly to the eight original male ancestors. Since there is almost no emigration to the island, the surnames are kept intact for many generations. Okay. So that was paragraph D, very short. It's about the surnames of the inhabitants on the island. Um, and uh, here you could think about it like you're studying the sociology of the island, right? Okay, so uh, B, I have this catalog in my head. So B was uh, the discovery and its military use, okay? Uh, C was some uh, genetic disorders and genetic commonalities. And then D was now about the names. All right, so uh, quite clear logically. E, education on the island is very limited. Children only attend school until the age of 15 with the option of taking the British standardized test for secondary school graduates once they have completed schooling. Um, as a consequence of the low quality of education, standardized test scores are generally very poor. Another indication of the island's remoteness and relative lack of contact with the outside world is that the English spoken among its natives is very different from that spoken in the rest of the world. I have a feeling, um, students, that some of the people on Tristan de Kuna might have actually taken the IELTS exam at some point. That would be my guess. Just kind of an interesting side note. Um, now we're talking about education on the island. So continuing with the concept of sociology, community on the island, we discuss the education of the people on the island. Okay. Abhishek says, ha ha. But it's true, Abhishek. I would, I would be willing to wager that some people from Tristan de Kuna that decided to do maybe university, uh, have taken the IELTS exam. Okay, uh, let's keep reading. Um, F. Arguably, one of the most interesting facts about Tristan de Kuna was that until the aftermath 
of the Second World War, the only currency in place was the potato. Uh, for example, the newspaper, the Tristan Times, could be purchased for four big potatoes. Today, Tristan de Kuna uses the British pound as its currency, which is odd because neighboring St. Helena, 2,173 kilometers away, of which Tristan de Kuna shares its status as a British overseas territory, uses the St. Helena pound and not the British pound. Since Tristan de Kuna was formed by volcanic activity and the volcano which formed it is still active, the inhabitants of the island live in constant danger of volcanic eruption. The last such eruption occurred as recently as 1961 when all of the islanders had to be evacuated to England. While some communities around the world participate in fire, earthquake, or tornado drills, the residents of Tristan da Cunha participate in evacuation skills where they practice the protocol for evacuation of the island in case of volcanic eruption. Okay, so again, some more visualization here. I'm this scientist. I'm now researching the currency that's used on the island. It's amazing. Um, that they use the potato, now they use the British pound. And also, uh, of course, it's hard to ignore that there's this giant volcano on the island, this ever-looming danger that it could erupt, and the people there have to evacuate. All right, we have one more paragraph here. So, uh, the last one. The Tristan economy is built mainly upon farming. All land is owned by the community. That is to say, there is no individual land ownership. Another significant part of the economy is the exportation of crayfish and lobster, mainly to Japan and the United States. Wow, I would love to try a lobster uh, from Tristan de Kuna. It must be amazing because I'm guessing the water is so fresh and clean there. Okay, so again, I'm excited about this. Um, if anybody uh, knows a place where a person can buy lobster from Tristan de Kuna, send me an email. I'm interested. All right. So um, <clears throat> a fire that occurred in 2008 greatly affected both the domestic and export economies. Tristinians are a fiercely proud and independent people. Even when given the choice to stay in England after exile due to volcanic eruption, Almost every resident returned to the island. Okay, um, so uh, really interesting. A little bit about the economy. Uh, so farming, selling crayfish and lobster. This is um, obviously kind of a like a communist type of society, a Marxist type of society where people don't actually own land, but they work together, which makes sense. It's a very small island. Okay. Um, so, uh, and they love their island, even uh, when they went to England because of a volcanic eruption, after everything uh, returned to normal, they returned back to the island. Okay. All right. So, um, now I have completed my scientific exploration of Tristan da Cunha. I am now going to get back on my boat, return home, and write a book about this. So, firstly... Um, I'm going to introduce Tristan da Cunha. It's an interesting place for sociology and genetics. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about its early history, who discovered it, and then its use as a military base by the British who actually took uh, control of the island. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the genetics and the genetic studies that can be had on the island, a little bit about the names of the people, um, who are on the island. Then I'll talk about the education system on the island, how people learn there. Uh, then I'll talk about um, the currency uh, that's used um, on the island. And then I'll discuss a little bit about the geography, the volcano, um, the society, the economy of the island. Uh, and then conclude with how people who live on the island love the island. So all of this information is now contained in my head in the same order that I was reading 
because I was participating in the information as this researcher. Whew, that was a mouthful. Did everybody follow me on that? So did everybody kind of go with me on this journey through the process of learning about Tristan DeCuna? Yeah, everybody on board? That's what you want to do. So this is what we call active reading. This is when you can really learn to enjoy reading, okay? Because it's not just uh, going in your eyes and out the back of your head, but it's processing in your brain and you're enjoying it, okay? Janiel says, yes, definitely. All right. David says, yeah, I have read it aloud too. Okay, good. Bakrat, Rashika, Devanch. Nice. All right. That's what we want to do. Uh, let's uh, check out the questions now. Okay. So <clears throat> here we have um, the matching paragraph. So A to G. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven uh, paragraphs. Um, we have to uh, write the correct letter in the box, so box number one on our question sheet. Um, in the, um, the computer-based exam, this looks like a table, and you actually have to like just do a little check mark. So they'll have one, two, three, four, five, and then they'll have um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you have to put a check mark in the correct box. Okay, so... The different types of money used on the island. Um, where did that come from? So which paragraph uh, did we read about the different types of money um, used on the island? According uh, to uh, our story here. Okay. So David says it's about the potatoes and the British pound. And was that at the beginning, the middle, or the end? Okay. So when you're looking at these questions, you might not remember the exact paragraph, but you'll remember that it was potato. Okay. And you'll remember that maybe it was the beginning, the middle, or the end. Okay, so here, uh, David says, yeah, it was definitely in the middle. So if it's in the middle, then we're kind of looking at um, C, D, E. So A, B would be the beginning. Um, C, D, uh, E would be the middle. Okay, so uh, beginning would be A, B. Middle would be like C, D, E. And the end would be like F, G. So if we think that, okay, what well, was somewhere around the middle, then um, let's start by checking um, D. That's what I would do. I would go right to the very middle. Okay. So uh, there are just eight surnames. So that's surnames. That's not it. Um, education on the island, so that's not um, it, okay, okay, so F, arguably one of the most interesting facts about Tristan de Kuna was that after the Second World War, the only currency in place was the potato, so here I am in F, okay, so it wasn't actually the middle, it was closer to the end, but if we're looking at the word count, you're kind of correct because this is still somewhat in the middle. So F is the correct answer, and you can find it really quickly by this process, okay? So F it is, all right? And you follow the same process, okay? Now, with this question, don't panic. Um, often what happens is students start to panic, but with this kind of question, the, the matching, the content, it becomes faster and faster, okay? So number two, exam results of, Tristini, uh, of Tristan students, okay? So this is about education. And um, because we just looked at the 
uh, content of D, E, and F, we know that the answer to this question is E. And Devanch is already on it because we read we just read that, right? So D was about surnames, E was about education, and um, F uh, was about the money used on the island. Now, we have to be careful though, you do have to read the passage if you're just skimming and scanning, there could be another paragraph that has more information on education, but we know that's not the case because we actually read the passage, okay? Number three, discussion of the original inhabitants of the island. So uh, the people who first lived on the island, okay? All right, um, so here it's talking about the uh, original men and women who talked, who lived on this island. So Devon says, I think that was uh, C. All right. So let's take a look. According to a recent consensus, the island has a population of just 260 people who mainly reside here, okay? It is thought that the residents of the island descend from just 15 ancestors. So C it is, okay? That is the paragraph talking about the genetics of the island. That makes sense, right? Because genetics are inherited. So C is the right answer. Okay, number four, the island as an armed forces outpost. This one should be really easy. We talked about it, military base. Um, the second paragraph talked about the person who discovered the island and its use as a military base. So we know that it's B. I'm sure everybody's going to get that. And I can see it, Devanch, Bakrat, Abhishek, Janil, very quickly all said B as well, okay? And then number five, the geography of the island. So where the island is located, um, this one is going to be fairly easy also. Uh, number five, Bakrat says it's A, that's the introduction. It makes sense, right? In the introduction, we explain where the island is, what it looks like, we introduce the island. So A makes sense, very, very good. Okay, and a lot of you got that. So uh, again, remember very importantly, everyone, that with this kind of a question, number one might be a little bit slow, number two might still be a bit slow, but then your answers are going to be faster and faster because you're going to have a clear and clear understanding of the passage and the information as you go along, okay? So visualization, very important for this, paraphrasing, very important for this, and patience, is very important for this kind of question, okay? So again, I go back to what I said earlier, don't panic when you're reading uh, and you're answering these questions. If it takes you a little bit longer to answer the first question, it is absolutely okay, all right? Uh, everybody got that? That's a very important point. I'll even write a little note on that. So uh, never panic. in the uh, reading uh, questions. It is okay if the first few questions take a bit more time to answer. You will be faster for the uh, latter questions, okay? So just stay calm and stick with strategy. Okay, everybody clear on that? So don't panic. One of the big mistakes that happen is students start to freak out and then they start to really just lose concentration and, and look all over the place, okay? All right. 
So Bahrat says, actually, it happened with me today. Oh, Bahrat, no. Okay, so remember it next time. Don't let that happen, all right? So stick with strategy. Okay, so here we go. Uh, match the following places with facts about them from the passage. So there were a few places that were mentioned. St. Helena, Tristan de Cunha, United Kingdom, and Portugal. Okay, um, let's do this together. Uh, it should be fairly easy as long as you understood the passage. Uh, you shouldn't have to do too much skimming or scanning or reading for this. Took political control of the island in the 19th century. Um, well, either United Kingdom or Portugal. Uh, who took control of the island in the 19th century? David says, number six is UK, C. Yeah, absolutely. In 1816, if I remember correctly. So, took control of the island. They annexed the island. They basically said, it's ours. Okay. All right, number seven, uses its own currency. This one I remember too, because they were very clear about this in the passage. So, they said, um, Tristan de Cunha uses the potato or use the potato. Now they use the British pound, right? But there's another island that uses its own currency, and that was St. Helena. That was very good. That was the example that they said, okay? All right. Home to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. That should also be a given. You should not have to search for that. But if you do need to search because you're confused and you're panicking, then search for this name, okay? Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. However, hopefully you don't have to do that. Okay. David says, number eight, I don't know. Number eight is Tristan de Cunha. Okay. So this one's B. Uh, the passage says that uh, Tristan de Cunha is also known as Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. Okay. All right, origin of the name Tristan de Cunha. Uh, again, I, I don't think you should have to search for that if you're uh, reading uh, while visualizing and concentrating on the information. So number nine, origin of the name Tristan de Cunha. Yeah, that was Portugal, absolutely, of the captain that discovered it in the uh, 16th century, right? So that was D. Okay. Again, with good reading, you should not have to search for answers. All right. Islanders had to be evacuated here after a natural disaster. The natural disaster was the volcano erupting. This was at the very end of the passage. Um, number 10, Bakrat says, is C to the UK. David, very good. That's what I was looking for. Is even more specifically, it was England, right? So they were evacuated to England, the inhabitants. Okay, um, and which nationality discovered the island? So this is the last one, uh, discovered the island. Here's your choices. And again, that was, should be an easy one here. Uh, D, Portugal, right? So... Uh, it was a Portuguese captain who discovered the island, Tristão de Cunha, and that's where um, the island got its name. Okay. All right. So, not too bad. And again, the more you read, the more carefully you read, the faster the answers will be. Okay. All right. Now we have our last couple of questions here. Uh, where we have to correctly complete uh, each of these statements. Now, the trick to this type of a question is to complete the statement on your own and then find the correct match. So, because the number of people that move permanently to the island is so small, uh, what happens? So, according to what you read, what do you remember what happens? Because there are so few people that moved to this island, what happens? There's a couple of interesting points that happen. So not a lot of people move to the island. It's kind of all this original same group of people or the same family. 
um, what happens on the island or what doesn't happen on the island. Okay, so David says they have certain genetic conditions. And Kashirsha says there are really only eight surnames. Yeah, so those are the two. Okay, so because not many people move to the island, um, their names don't really change. Their family name or surnames don't change. And they have some conditions, asthma and glycoma, right? Um, okay. So um, last names remain the same for generations. Asthma is very rare. That's not true because we know asthma is very common. Very different from other variations of English. That's grammatically wrong. Continually developing and often uh, confuses to outsiders. So the best answer here is A. Last names remain the same for generations. We don't have, um, there are genetic conditions. That would be correct as well. Asthma is very common would be correct, but because it's very rare, it's incorrect. So careful with that kind of uh, misleading terminology. So here the answer is A. Okay. Last names remain the same for generations. Okay, last question, number 13. Due to its remoteness, the dialect of Tristinians is, if somebody said, Adrian, you have to finish the sentence, I would say unique. Or I, if I want to be a little bit more expressive, I would say is a unique form of English. Okay, so due to its remoteness, the dialect of Tristinians is a unique form of English, right? So there it is. Very different from other variations of English. Very different from the same as saying a unique form of English, right? So it's paraphrasing. So again, the trick with this type of question, complete the ending, is think about the answer first on your own and then find the correct match, okay? All right, so that's a lesson in IELTS reading, focusing on critical thinking, uh, visualization. These are key for active reading skills. Thank you for practicing with me today, members. I appreciated your input. I think you did a great job. I really liked, by the way, how many of you answered the questions. You put the number and then you put the correct answer and you even put what you thought was the key element of that answer. So I think that was really, really smart. Okay. Uh, Kyber, um, absolutely it takes time to think of the answer first. Uh, however, you have to do that because otherwise um, it takes more time to search for an answer, especially if you don't know which one is the correct answer. So if you try both Kyber, if you try to just search for the correct answer, then firstly your error rate will be higher and secondly you'll also discover that it actually takes you more time uh, trying to figure out which one it could be rather than thinking about it on your own or looking for it in the exam. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone. Um, so again, for lots of HD videos to get all of our exam strategies and for a fully interactive course, um, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS. Uh, we are Again, official IELTS registration centers, um, certified agents, and you can click these big red buttons to join our premium package. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access, so it's well worth it. Uh, hang around, everyone. I will be back in about 30 minutes with another class where everybody can join the chat, and that will be listening practice for part one and two to get those higher band scores. Uh, that's it for now. I will be back soon. Hang around. Bye.